Again, I believe that this is a historically contingent circumstances, which is potentially correctable through ideological alteration. But again, I, I realize this is probably an impasse between you, the, the pessimistic curmudgeon, and me, the uh, the cheery optimist. I mean, I, I mean... You know, it's not illegal to smile, Dave. <laughs> oh, I, I smile. I mean, I just... I. I, I think that they, if there is ever a time when when kind of I, I don't know, man. I and mean, what people want, like what people are gonna, you're gonna end up with a king cocker because people are going to grasp for identities that have solid characteristics to them. They're gonna be common religious identities, and they're gonna be common ethnic ethnic identities. Not because like people are looking at actual genes, because ethnic identities, like genes, are a proxy for common history. And like that's that's what's going to happen, right? I, I don't know. I, like that's and 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 being the person who's caught on the outside of that, like if you're the person who's not like developing your own ethnicity or own own concept of nation that actually means something. I mean, like I could imagine a concept of the American identity, but it would be almost entirely vacant, right? And so, okay, so my neighbor has a concept of Muslim identity, right, or a concept of Jewish identity, or a concept of Chinese identity. Uh, he could go through the six questions and like fill them with detail and quality and thickness. My American identity would have like Thanksgiving, and then, I can't. I can't, and I can't even. I can. I can't. And half the people, I can't. I can literally can't even eat the same meal with them. Then do I something about that, Dave. Oh, we'll do something about like what? What do you want me to? Do? We want me to change the composition of this country so that it's no. I, I I want you to change your conception of what constitutes an American national identity. I, I I want you to make it thicker and make it something that could be used as the basis for a community instead of just saying, oh, right now at this moment in time, you know, with with the erosion of of American values uh, as as a result of, of managerial and technocratic interests. Okay, yeah, I get it. We get it. Like this shit shit has been eroded. Um, oh, I can do that. The, the Queen Isabella did that. The what? Queen Isabella made the Spanish identity thicker. <laughs> uh, I don't understand the reference. Oh, Queen Isabella. She. Um, oh, Queen Isabella. She, she had a multicultural country on her uh, hands after uh, defeating the Muslims, and uh, her solution was just to declare Christianity as the religion. And uh, if you weren't okay. just that's that, that's a solution. It's not my solution, Dave. I know. I know that's a, that's a solution you like. I, but... No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm being facetious here, King Rocket. I mean, like it. Uh, how? Uh, like uh, the the thing is, like the 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 tools to do this are. I, I don't know, man. The tools to, the tools to do this is. Um, I can't make people all have the same religion. I can't make people celebrate all the same holidays. And I certainly can't change the past or their history or how they look. And people will always associate how they look with their past. Uh, so I don't know how you could even possibly fix this, right? Like, well, it's, it's well, look, you, could, you could, I could see how a strong, I use Queen Isabella as an example of the brutality it would need to create these situations. I mean, that's not, I wouldn't want to do that. I would want people to just have their own separate nations, right? Yeah. Well, look, um, I, I know you, you hate it when people drop bibliographies, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, uh, to, to, to consider reading ethno symbolism and nationalism, a cultural approach. It's, it's pretty short. It's like less than 200 pages. The author's a guy named okay. Smith and, you know, just, just give it a read. And see what you think. At, le at least see if maybe you can add a tool to your arsenal uh, in your project of cultural restoration in whatever capacity you want to do it in, whether it's national or otherwise. My, my project is, is, is an explicitly nationalistic one. And I, I hope that maybe I, over the course of this conversation, my, my views on these matters well, at least I became I, clearer. I appreciate your contribution, King Crocoduck, but I'm... Um, uh, <sighs> The, the feeling on my side of these things is that we're handed like these impossible problems to fix. And then it's like, okay, like, well, you can feel proud of your country when you figure out a way to like make all the races achieve at school at equal parity. Like I've heard that one a few times from progressives, like America can't feel proud as long as there's a racial gap in achievement. And so I'm yeah, sitting no, here with like, this impossible problem on my hand. Like, so my, pride is like behind this impossible jigsaw puzzle that no one has ever been able to figure out 
Allow me to and, like, I appreciate that. the sentiment, but like fix like fix this problem that no one's ever figured out without using massive amounts of brutality like Isabella did. Uh, you know, I use that as an example of you know the violence I fear would be necessary to 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 fit a square peg into a round hole. You can fit a square peg into a round hole if you smash the, the edges off the square, uh, the peg. Yeah. Uh, but like, I don't, I don't imagine that is an ideal future, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, this, this is a relevant tactical concern. When you, when you look at the high resolution, how do you actually go about engaging in this project and moving us from here to there? But you know, the low resolution strategic project of, of grounding everyone within common national identity seems to me at the very least a worthy endeavor that's, that's worthy of consideration and, and hashing out the details of the high resolution tactical aspect of it. And that's that's going to be kind of my my last word on the issue for today. Okay, I mean, uh, fair enough. I'm, I I do respect your opinion. I, I I feel like we're kind of speaking separate languages. I mean, I if anything, I wish that we could have our own Israel for every different nation of people. I I don't. I see the Western countries trying to push in the opposite direction. I agree. I think I think they need to be more like Israel, um, with nation defined along those six characteristics that that I suggested. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm afraid that I I really worry that the these six characteristics are just going to be what we classically see in terms of ethnicity, race, and religion, just remixed in separate ways. And if that if that ends up being the incident, if that ends up being the case incidentally. I honestly don't care. I, I I want to have people who are loyal to the same set of values and symbols, irrespective of what their race is. And if this results in a distribution of races that 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 doesn't match the kind of parity that progressives are looking for, then whatever. I'm not looking for equality of outcome. I'm looking for people who are invested in in in, in a project of society in which we can work together and 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 do something that's constructive. So that's 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 where I stand. No, I'm, uh, maybe this is just. A, I mean, I really hate it. You know, I think uh, maybe I misrepresented you on my talk on Fiddler's Green podcast. So I apologize for that if I indeed did. Maybe what our difference is just a difference of pessimism and optimism. I oh, I would um, say so. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm very. At this point, I'm very, very, uh, I feel like I've gotten a keen sense for what unsolvable problems look like and how they're used to screw me over. <laughs> I mean, haven't you seen a few of those like unsolved, like here guys, solve this unsolvable problem and then you'll get your reward, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, untie yeah, that, the Gordian knot, right? Like, you, you you, literally just described the history of the Jewish nation. Hey guys, go, you know, people who are spread out in diaspora, and you know who who are who are marginalized and oppressed in, in all of these foreign nations and foreign lands. Go ahead and make the desert bloom in your homeland. Oh, you did it! Good job, you guys. That's the source of my optimism. I think I think that everybody else should be allowed to make their deserts bloom. But well, I, yeah. I think that you know I I do appreciate what Israel is. That I you know I also appreciate what the Boers in South Africa d did too, uh, which is not you know and. I think that this is something that will, you know, I think that whatever the, whatever Israel did, it's certainly working now because they have replacement birthright. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, that's, that is my gold standard for working. So I will definitely agree that, um, foreign entanglements, notwithstanding whatever Jews are doing inside of Israel domestically is causing them to have in a highly technological society more than two children per woman. Um, like I definitely, I think that that's an interesting thing that we should pay attention to. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a lot more messy though than, 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 you know, you might believe, but I, you, it sounds like you have to go. I have super chats so you can stay or, or you, if you want to, no, I've, I've got to hit the gym before it closes. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for showing up. I hope we clarified things. And I, I do appreciate your optimistic perspective on this matter, right? Uh, we're all trying to solve the same problem. Thanks very much, Dave. And remember to smile. Okay, just once I in a will. while. All right. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. King right. Have a good night. Goodbye. You too. Bye.
All right, guys, on to the super chats. Um, I am, hmm. I, I guess I'm just trying to think of how what to take from that talk. I, I don't feel like I really connected with anything he was saying. Uh, I, I don't think America is a solvable problem uh, inside the parameters of liberal democracy. Uh, it, it, will, it will require some kind of hard hand to keep things in order. Uh, to get thick, it requires an even stronger totalitarian hand of the kind that I talked about with Isabella. Um, and then, uh, I, I, and, and I don't, I don't know, if, I don't, I don't see that coming on the horizon. I think we're, we're too weak to implement something like that. We have to make do with the, with the world as it is. Uh, I, um, I don't know. I, 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 I wish every one nation could have their own Israel. I wish every peoples could have their own country to call their own. Uh, I think that the American government has pretty much, you know, they pretty much uh, determined that this would be uh, that this would would be against government policy to have this ever occur in Germany. I, I I'm actually amazed. Like I did some research before this stream, and uh, people asked me, I'm like, oh, well, is there? You know, there was a question about whether Germany is legitimate. So I was expecting to maybe get some questions about legitimacy of German identity, and. Um, and uh, I just looked up the denazification article on Wikipedia, and I, 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 I obviously know this stuff is true. I know that the United States government had a policy to institute the idea of collective guilt in the German people, but I, I didn't know where. I wasn't aware that this was literally just on Wikipedia. Like I didn't. I, I thought this was only the dusty books that me and my friends collect. But literally, right now in November twenty sixth, uh, two thousand twenty three. They just have, um, it's all there. They, they have the entire U.S. government program of trying to institute collective guilt on the German people uh, at all levels and discourage German identity. And it literally has paid for by the United States State Department and the United States intelligence apparatus after World War II. It's all documented right on Wikipedia. You know, and then all the Adorno stuff too with the, you know, the, the collective guilt of of Auschwitz makes it so that there can be no legitimate pride in Western European identities after this moment. Uh, it's all there. I how how would you create a feeling of collective pride if this is your history for the last sixty years? But anyway, uh, I'll keep I'll answer some super chats here. So photo hab. Ooh. Photor Habdus Luminescens for $50. In the later Dune books, you have the collapse of the Fremen identity. Why? Because the desert disappears. This was a common struggle all Fremen faced together. I don't think a national identity can exist long without a common struggle. How can French, German, Polish, Russian identities exist without struggle against each other? Well, currently... I think that these European identities will exist as a struggle against the EU and against global managerialism and against uncontrolled immigration into Europe, and then they'll form up religiously into something else. Cato Man 55 for USA $10. The Smithsonian U.S. federal government has identified white people and their traditions and attitudes and way of life in order to denigrate them. Well, yeah, I, I do agree with that, Kataman. I mean, like, this is like the denazification question. I think King Crocodile probably would say that this is part of the woke ideology that he fights. And, uh, I mean, I agree with him that it's bad. But, I mean, the problem is that this stuff is observable. I mean, the difficulty is, is that racial differences and ethnic differences are observable. So if you deny them and pretend like they don't exist, you immediately come off as less honest. And people want to live out these distinctions. I mean, you're not going to be able to have like, you know, you're not going to be able to convince African-Americans that their role in society is to be the lower class to a country dominated by whites and Asians. They're never going to accept that. Now, I think that there, there could we could live together if there was an understanding 
that we were just, we were totally focused on our own communities. We're totally focused on making the African American community as good as it possibly could be. But that's not the narrative that America has been telling itself for the last hundred years. The last hundred years has been, you shouldn't be loyal to your local community. You should be loyal to the macrocosmic American project because the macrocosmic American project is a meritocracy. 